In my first year of university, I was asked to buy a whole bunch of drafting equipment, which I actually made a video about. So if you want to watch that, you can click up here. But this year it's a little bit different and because we are working mostly with computer software, I really only need to buy the basic uh, equipment and supplies for interior design school. And I want to share with you what that is. So first I want to talk about the essential supplies and equipment and then I want to share with you the softwares or the computer programs that you may need if you enroll in interior design school. Let's get right into it. It's pretty obvious that you will need some notebooks to take your notes. Some of my classmates actually have iPads where they take notes and they no longer have the paper notebooks. And I tried doing this last semester, but I realized that I still prefer to have physical paper notebooks to take my notes on. And I don't know the reason for that. I guess I just love uh, writing on paper and having my markers and my highlighters. So I have to buy some notebooks for our school. So I always like to get uh, notebooks that are uh, blank, you know, with blank paper or with dotted paper. I never get the ones that are with line paper or what's the other one, uh, grid, grids. And that is because most of the times I like to draw and sketch things on my notebook. And I just find it that if you have like a line paper, then it gets pretty dirty and you cannot really see the sketch very well. So it's just really to be able to sketch on a blank paper and that way is neater and cleaner. And for some strange reason, I do not like the 8.5 by 11 notebooks. I just feel like they are too big and it's pretty annoying for me, especially if I have to carry more than one on my backpack. So I always try to get smaller notebooks because I feel like they are easier to handle and to carry around. So I always like to get gel pens. For some strange reason also, I cannot write with anything else if it's not a gel pen. I do not have a specific brand to recommend to you, but I just try to get pens that are gel. Now, if you're gonna be having drafting classes or hand drawing classes, you will most likely be required to buy graphite pencils or sometimes called drawing pencils. Now, graphite pencils have actually 16 degrees of hardness and the degree is always gonna be shown on your pencil. So you will see that there is a letter and a number a letter will be either H, B, or F. So basically this means that pencils that are H are lighter than the ones that are B. And the F is basically like a middle point. Architectural scale rulers are a must for interior designers and also for architects. And although we work most of the time with computer software, we still do a lot of things on paper, especially on the preliminary stages of our design process, which is why we need a scale ruler. Now, the type of ruler that you will need will depend on the country that you live and the units that the construction industry works with works with in your country. So here in Canada, we work with imperial units, but we also work with metric units, which is actually very annoying, but that's the way it is. Uh, if you're working on a project that's like government type of project, for example, a library, uh, you will have to submit your drawings in metric units. But if you're doing like a residential project, a renovation, or even a restaurant, you will be using imperial units. And most designers use imperial units because that's what they teach us in school. So we find it easier and we know uh, the units better uh, if it's an imperial, which is super strange because I do know that working with metric is way easier than working with uh, feet and inches. But anyway, that's just the way it is. And if you are in the interior design industry, you have to get a architectural scale ruler. I do recommend you to get the metal ones because the plastic ones can break very easily. I've already bought like three different plastic scale rulers. So the next one that I get is definitely gonna be metal. If you are gonna be doing hand drawings and hand renderings, which you will mostly be doing on your first year of university, then you're definitely gonna need some markers. Now, my recommendation is to get some good quality markers and although they are a little bit more expensive, they are totally worth it. Personally, I have only used Chartpack and Copic 
uh, when I do hand renderings. But there are other brands that I've heard of. One is Toach and the other one is Promarker, though I've never used them, so I wouldn't be able to recommend them to you. Okay guys, so if you are in school, you will most likely be required to get a measuring tape. And not only in school, actually, I use a measuring tape every day of my life. I'm not even kidding with you. Um, everywhere I go, I just like to measure things because we design spaces, so we need to know what spaces measure. Like if I go to a restaurant, you will see me like literally measuring the table, the height, the width, the chair, and then the hallways. It's super weird. Some people look at me like, what is she doing? But I really don't care, and I think it's a great way to learn about dimensions and space and things that you're definitely gonna need when you are designing. If you have space planning classes, which I think everyone will have space planning classes at some point in their career, you are gonna need, actually you're not gonna need this, but I think it's very handy, but you will be doing a lot of floor plans manually. So there are these really cool templates that have like furniture and like toilets and uh, sofas and tables. And so then you can use them to make your drawings a little faster and more accurate and more precise. You don't have to get this, but I remember that I had a template when I was on my first year of university and it was pretty handy. So that's just a tool that I recommend you to get. You will probably be asked to get a drawing tube and this is really just to store your drawings and so that they won't get wrinkled or wet or damaged. And guys, it's super important that your drawings are always nice and clean and neat. So a drawing tube is also something that I use pretty much every time that I carry my drawings around. So guys, I think those are like the very essential things that I always use. And I'm not only using all these things uh, for school, but these are actually things that I use even when I'm working, like on a daily basis. I still use my markers even if I'm not in school. I use my measuring tape every single day I use my uh, scale ruler and like basically everything that I mentioned are things that are very very useful and you are gonna be using in school and also in the rest of your career so now let's move on to the most exciting part which is the softwares and the programs that interior designers use. Now, here's the thing, depending on which university you study at, you might be learning different software than other people. But right now, I just wanna share with you what are the programs that are more common and that are the most popular ones in the industry. So let's begin. So based on my research, and my research was actually a poll that I did on my Instagram a few days ago where I asked you which is the software that you use for interior design. And most people use SketchUp, which I thought that was gonna be the answer to be honest with you because SketchUp is just an incredible program. I just love it, it's easy to learn, it's convenient, uh, it's, it's just great. So that's what most people use nowadays. And then second is AutoCAD. Uh, which I already, I also knew like a lot of people use AutoCAD these days. Uh, so those two are like the leading programs as of today. Now, this might change because a lot of people and a lot of designers are actually uh, shifting to Revit. So yeah, Revit is another one that a lot of architects use and each time more designers are actually jumping into the world of Revit. Now there are other softwares such as Maya, Rhino, Vectorworks, and 3ds Max. Uh, some designers use that, but it's really just a little percent of designers that use these programs. Now rendering softwares, I really like to talk about this because I think that rendering is such a cool thing to know how to do in interior design, especially these days that everything is just computerized. The way that it works is that some programs you can actually install the rendering program to that program. I hope that's making sense. So for example, for SketchUp, uh, you can install a rendering extension to be able to render inside SketchUp. And so there are different rendering programs or rendering extensions that you can download. Uh, some of the most popular ones are V-Ray, Enscape, Lumion, and what's the other one? Podium, 
And also based on my research, most people use V-Ray and Enscape. Currently I am using Enscape because that's what I'm learning in school. In the past, I used a little bit of V-Ray and I also used a little bit of Podium. So the question that everyone asks is which one is the best rendering uh, program or software? And to be completely honest with you, all of them can create amazing results. Some little things are better with certain programs than others. For example, I have found that Enscape is a great program and I'm actually loving it. But when I try to import uh, like clothing and fabrics, it does not look as realistic as with V-Ray. But having said so, being able to create an amazing render does not entirely depend on the program. It actually depends on your dedication and your knowledge of the program. And also you should know that creating renders requires a lot of work, a lot of hours, a lot of effort, a lot of patience. So I would say that to be able to create amazing renders, you need a good program, yes, but you also need to learn everything within that program and practice and practice and practice because really any program can potentially create good results. Now, additionally to that, you have probably heard from Photoshop for rendering purposes. And this is something that I recommend you to learn regardless of the rendering extension that you choose, either V-Ray, Podium, Enscape, or what's the other one, Lumion. Because Photoshop is like the step that goes after you finish your render in this uh, programs that I already talked about. So with Photoshop, you can enhance a lot of the things that your rendering program couldn't do specifically. For example, in Photoshop, if you have like a couch that it's looking too blue, you can change specifically the color of that couch without affecting the other elements in the space. So definitely Photoshop, something that I would recommend you to learn if you wanna get into the world of digital rendering. Next thing that I wanna talk about is hardware. So that is basically computers. Now. In interior design school, most of your work is actually gonna be done at home. Although you have to go to school for lectures and although schools have computers where you can work on, most people actually prefer to do everything at home, especially because a lot of the homeworks are gonna require a lot of hours and hours and hours and late nights. So having a computer is basically a necessity if you are in interior design school. Now, I can make an entire video talking about which computer to get. If you want me to do that, I can actually make an entire video. Let me know down in the comments. But for now, I just wanna tell you that some softwares, actually, I don't know about other ones, but I do know that Revit only runs on Windows. So if you have a Mac computer, either you have to have Windows on your Mac, which actually you can do through Bootcamp. Uh, I've never done it, but I've heard that it works pretty well or you can just get a Windows computer if you are going to be learning Revit. AutoCAD, you can actually run it on Mac and on Windows as well. SketchUp also, you can do Mac or Windows. So really depending on which program you're gonna be using at school, uh, you are gonna be required to work with either Windows or Mac. So that's something that you wanna take into consideration. Additionally, you will need a mouse because all of these programs uh, are easier to work on with a mouse. And last but not least, I would recommend you to get a external hard drive to keep a backup of your work at all times. About a year ago, I lost a lot of my information and my files and I had not backed them up and so I lost it all. And so these things can happen to you, so it's super important to always keep a backup of your work. So guys, those were the main tools, supplies, things, equipment, software, programs, computers <laughs> that I basically use on a daily basis uh, for interior design school. I hope you found this video useful. If you have any questions, let me know down in the comments and I will see you guys next week. Bye-bye.